welcome so in the previous video i was talking about formulation of tower of hanoi problem uh, i also discussed about uh, how to formulate the rabbit and fibonacci number problem right so in tower of hanoi problem when i ended the discussion uh, i was able to formulate that uh, hn is equal to 2 times hn minus 1 plus 1 so in this video we are going to quickly uh, review that uh, the formulation part and then we will also try to find a general formula that given any value of n how to calculate the total number of steps required to move n disks from one peg to another peg and then we will take some uh, more uh, interesting problem uh, based on a formulation of recurrence relation so in case if you are new to the channel uh, please uh, subscribe the channel and uh, watch the videos in sequence because otherwise you won't be able to understand the things properly right so this is my continuous request to everyone coming to this channel to watch the videos in the sequential order right so uh, let's start okay so uh, let us look at this problem once more so that you are clear about it so what we are basically uh, doing here that in total how many disks are here total n disks are there on the first peg and uh, i have to move all these n disks from the first peg to this peg now i have broken the problem in two parts and i have this notation hn which i am using to count the total number of steps needed to move these uh, n disks from this peg to this peg so before i uh, move all of them from here to uh, the second one what we are doing we are doing the problem in two parts we are first considering the top n minus 1 disk and to move this top n minus 1 disks from this peg to third one we are taking h n minus 1 steps here i want to uh, highlight this that uh, h n is just the symbol that we are using to count the number of moves uh, to move n disks from one peg to another peg similarly h n minus 1 is the number of steps needed to move n minus 1 disks from the first peg to third peg right now once we are done with this process of moving uh, this n minus 1 top disks from the first peg to third peg in the end on the first peg we are left with just this bottom disk right so this bottom disk can be moved from this peg to this peg in how many steps in one step right because that will be the only uh, disk available here now we have a situation that here we have uh, the largest disk this peg is empty no disk is available here and this has total n minus one disk now how many steps are needed to move these h n my uh, sorry n minus one disks from this peg to this peg it will again require h n minus one steps so the total number of steps are h n is equal to 2h n minus 1 plus 1 and h1 i uh, already told you is equal to 1 because uh, we just need one move uh, to move one disk from this peg to this peg right so this is the problem now how to solve this problem so to solve this problem we are going to use the recursive steps so let us understand it hn is equal to 2hn minus 1 plus 1 so this can further be written as twice of and for hn minus 1 i can write two times hn minus 2 plus 1 and then plus 1 so this will give me what this will give me 2 square hn minus 2 plus 2 plus 1 now this further can be written as 2 square and for hn minus 2 i can write 2 hn minus 3 plus 1 and then plus 2 plus 1 so this will become what this will become 2 cube h n minus 3 
plus 2 square plus 2 plus 1. So if you look at these uh, steps, I hope you have got the drift or the uh, uh, no, uh, point that it is taking. That if I have n minus 3 here, we are writing 3 power of 2, right? And then the other powers of 2 are there, means it is 3 power of 2, so then 2 a square, 2 to the power 1 and 1, which is 2 to the power 0. And in the end, we uh, want to use this initial condition that h1 is equal to 1. So suppose we have followed some step, there are many steps that will come in between. But in the end, suppose I am writing h1. So if I am writing h1, it means what? It means that I am writing h n minus n minus 1. That will be h1 because n n cancel and then I will get 1. So if I am writing 1 here, it means I am writing n minus n minus 1. So, what will be the power of 2? The power of 2 will be n minus 1. So, the power of 2 is the same thing which I am subtracting here, right? Means, if you want to write it, you can write it n, n minus 1. And then, what will be the next power of 2? Next power of 2 will be 2 to the power n minus 2. Then, 2 to the power n minus 3 and so on. And then, 2 square plus 2 plus 1. So, 2 to the power n minus 1 is there and this h1 which is like n n cancel and I am getting h1 is nothing but 1. So, I am getting 2 to the power n minus 1 into 1 and then 2 to the power n minus 2 and then so on up to 2 a square plus 2 plus 1. So, in the end what we have got? In the end we have got a geometric progression whose first term is 1 and whose common ratio is 2 because 1 into 2 is 2, 2 into 2 is 2 a square and so on. So, how many terms are there in this uh, you know uh, uh, series? So, there are total n terms because if you see here 2 to the power 1 and 2 to the power n minus 1. So, in total n minus 1 terms and then this 1 which I can consider it 2 to the power 0. So, since the count is starting from 0, this total number of terms will be n. So, using the formula of uh, uh, geometric progression, uh, the sum of first n terms, it is, uh, you know, what is the formula you remember? a into r to the power n minus 1 by r minus 1. So, first term I am count, I am looking at the series from the end. So, I can write 1 and into 2 to the power n minus 1 by 2 minus 1. So, that answer will be 2 to the power n minus 1. So, we already have seen that to move uh, 3 disks, we require 2 to the power 3 minus 1, that is 7 steps. If I have, if I have 5 disks, uh, that will require 2 to the power 5 minus 1, that is 31 steps. And similarly, we can count the total number of steps uh, needed to move uh, all these n disks from uh, first peg to the uh, other peg, right? So, this is the solution of this problem, okay? Let us move to the next. Okay, so now let us look at this problem. Find a recurrence relation and give initial conditions. They are expecting us to give initial conditions as well. For the number of bit strings of length n that do not have two consecutive zeros. How many such bit strings of length uh, 5 are there? Right. So, this is what we have to solve. So, let us break this problem like this. So, suppose I call uh, a valid bit string, right? Number of bit string of length n. So, what is a valid bit string? A valid bit string uh, will have no two consecutive zero. Valid bit string of length n, and let us call this as a n. A n represents uh, valid bit strings of length n. Right. Now, if I take a n, there are two possibilities that. Bit strings, I hope you understand, like uh, if I talk about bit string of length 1, if I talk about bit string of length 1, so either it will be 0 or it will be 1, both have length 1. So, if I call it valid bit string of length 1, what is a1? a1 is equal to 2, because we have two uh, bit string of length 1. And similarly, if I uh, talk about uh, 
bit string of length 2 then valid will be 1 0 uh, 0 1 and 1 1 we can't take 0 0 because if we take 0 0 this will become invalid so how many valid bit strings of length 2 are there we have a2 is equal to 3 and that already is the initial condition so we have already got what is the second part of the problem that give initial condition so the initial condition is a1 is equal to 2 and a2 is equal to 3 that we got just by observation okay now uh, what i was saying is that if i look at the beta strings of length n there are two possibility either it will end with a 1 or it will end with a 0 because uh, you know beta strings we are using zeros and 1 so either it will end with a 1 or it will end with a 0 right now if it will end with a 1 look at this very carefully uh, this total beta string of this I mean uh, length of this beta string other than 1 right total length is n 1 is one of them this is 1 bit now how many bits are there total n minus 1 bits are there now these n minus 1 bits should occur in such a way that it should have no two consecutive zeros because if it will have two consecutive zeros then it will become an invalid beta string of length n right so what i am saying that what we are getting here which is uh, you know before this one this will be nothing but uh, a valid beta string of length n minus 1 did you get it or not because if it is invalid beta string of length n minus 1 means it will have two consecutive zero occurring at any of the places and then if i add a one it will uh, still remain invalid because uh, it already has uh, two consecutive zeros so this is like a n minus one now if you look at the second part of it if you have a zero here then certainly you can't have a zero here because if you will have a zero here then what will happen in the end we are getting two consecutive zero and that will make this bit string of length n as invalid so there must be certainly a one here right now we are already done with the last two digit what we are left with is the first n minus two digits now this first n minus two digits must not have two consecutive zeros why because if it will have two consecutive zeros then this total bit string of length n will also have two consecutive zero it means that it will become an invalid code word or invalid uh, bit string of length n right so if it is having n minus two bits and it is an invalid bit string of length n minus 2 then it should certainly be a n minus 2 right so you look at this problem in a different way how do i get uh, a n a valid beta string of length n that i am taking uh, a valid beta string of length n minus 1 and then adding 1 to it and we are taking a valid beta string of length n minus 2 and adding 1 and 0 so basically what we are getting is a n is equal to a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2 and we, here we can put n is greater than or equal to 3 because we already have got a 1 is equal to 2 and a 2 is equal to 3 okay now in the last part they are asking how many beta strings of length 5 are there so i will get a3 using the recursive approach so a3 will be equal to what it will be equal to a2 plus a1 a2 is 2 uh, a2 is 3 and uh, a1 is 2 so 3 plus 2 that is equal to 5 what will be a4 a4 will be a3 plus a2 a3 we have got 5 a2 we have got 3 so this is equal to 8 and what is uh, a5 so a5 is equal to a4 plus a3 and a4 is equal to 8 a3 is equal to uh, how much 
a3 is equal to this 5. So, 8 plus 5 is equal to 13, right? I think it was a2 that I wrote here, 3 plus 2, 5. So, total answer is how many uh, bit strings of length 5 are there? So, bit strings of length 5 are 13. So, this is the answer. I hope you have understood it. In case if you have not, please uh, think about this. Uh, sit for a minute, take a pause. Uh, build your own argument uh, what i basically have done i am trying to use the recursive approach so trying to write the uh, bit testing of length n in such a way that uh, we are looking at bit strings of length n minus 1 and bit strings of length n minus 2 okay so this is the solution of this problem please uh, repeat this please uh, you know watch this again in case if you have not got